The scope of damage is a very powerful component in SimSol. It's where you'll spend the majority of your time creating areas, adding dimensions, and adding repair items to your estimate. Because you'll spend so much time in the scope of damage, we've made it easy for you, so you can spend less time memorizing codes or formulas and finish your estimate quickly. So let's go ahead and take a look. To start, we're going to need to be inside of a claim. I have one here, so I'll double click on this claim file to open it up. Now once I get into the claim, I want to go into the building estimate section. More specifically, I want to go into the scope of damage screen. The scope of damage screen is where I'll find all of the areas I've created for this particular estimate. The scope of damage allows you to create a number of different area types as well. You'll see at the top that I've got the basic area button, but I also have the ability to create roofs and elevations. To begin, I'll click on area. Up will pop up the area dimension screen. In this window, we can add in the dimensions so that when we add in line items later on in this video, they're automatically calculated for us. Taking a look at this screen, you'll see the various components that we are able to add in, like the offsets, closets, doors, windows, and over here is for custom entries. Custom entries are great for when you need to deduct or add a specific square footage amount, but don't want to fuss with the adding or subtracting of any components. I'll enter in my area's name here, enter in the length and width of the room, leaving the height at 8 feet. I'll also add in a door and a window. As you can see, as I add in components, the area quantities at the bottom will change accordingly. Once I'm done, I can either proceed to the virtual scope sheet to start adding in my line items, or head back to the scope of damage to view my areas in the list. So here you'll see the scope of damage and my bedroom listed right here. I'll now double click it to open the virtual scope sheet, also known as the VSS. When the VSS loads, you'll see all of the possible line items that you can choose. In the top left of the VSS is the header. You'll see that it tells me which room I'm in, which is bedroom. This signifies I'm currently in the bedroom and that any repairs that I add at this time will be added to this bedroom for the estimate. The VSS itself is comprised of five different areas. Starting at the top, we have your menu bar and speed buttons. On the left hand side are all of the repair categories. Every single repair found in the database falls into one of these categories. To locate a repair item category, I can scroll up and scroll down this list. When I find a category that I believe contains the repair item I'm looking for, I simply just click on that category and you'll see it displays all of the repair items in that category in the center of the screen. So in the center of the virtual scope sheet is a list of all of the repair items. So that's one way to search for repairs. The other way I can come up to the top left hand column and simply type in the actual repair item that I'm looking for. When doing so, you usually want to search for one word at a time. When you do, you'll see this pop-up message here. This allows you to enter in a second word to further refine your search. So next, we'll move over to the right side of the screen. There's a drop-down list at the top here. This drop-down provides me with a few different visual options to be displayed on the right of the screen. I'd recommend that you select the second option down called Scopes. This will show you a legend as to what each of these numbers in the center of the screen represent, which will help you getting started here. Another really helpful option is the Spec Info. Spec Info will provide you with what's being charged for when you select a certain scope. Use whichever one works best for you. Down at the bottom of the virtual scope sheet is what's called the Mini Override screen. It displays the details of the last repair item that you added to the estimate. It contains things like quantity, unit of measure, the item description, the item price, the depreciation percentage, and more. So now that we've quickly gone over the layout of the virtual scope sheet, let's get down to the business of actually adding in a couple of repairs to this area. One of the repairs I want to make to this room is removing and replacing drywall. So the first thing I'll do is come over to the left and locate wall drywall items. Upon clicking on this category, I'll see all of the different wall drywall repair items listed in the center. As I look at the list, I find that the first item listed is wall drywall on wood framing. 
Before we continue, there's one thing that's important to know about the virtual scope sheet in terms of these categories. You'll notice to the left of these repairs, there's a column here with up and down arrows. The down arrow means that there's a second level of repair items related to this item, which will show me repair items that are more specific and directly related to that type of repair. So if I click on the down arrow next to wall drywall on wood framing, I go to level two and I'm presented with different types of drywall related options, all of which expand on the initial item, which was wall drywall on wood framing. Makes sense, right? Sometimes these level two items have down arrows as well, allowing for further and further levels of specification. So you can see that the virtual scope sheet allows you to select general description of a repair, or you can go into further detail depending on the repair. For this example, we're just going to stick to level one, which means I'll click on the up arrow to return to the top level. To the right of the item name, I notice that there is a row of numbers starting with one. You'll also notice this legend on the right that we referred to earlier has those same numbers listed here. And next to each number is a description of what type of repair these items correspond to. Number one is to remove, two is replace, three is remove and replace, four is to repair, five is remove and reinstall, six is clean, seven is paint and finish, eight is minimum charge, and nine is select item. When I want to add a repair, I simply click on the number associated with that repair. So for this drywall, we're going to remove it and then we're going to replace it by clicking on number three. I've now added those repairs to my estimate. If I look down towards the bottom in my mini override screen, you'll see that replace wall drywall is being presented as the last item I added to my estimate. Now look up to the top left of the virtual scope sheet and click on this list button here. This will show you a list of every item you currently have in this area. If we want to change anything about our items, such as depreciation or cost, you can double click on those items to modify them. You can also highlight and right click in the screen to change things like sales tax or economic age. For now, let's go ahead and return to the VSS so we can see all of our repair items. You can do so by clicking on the VSS button in the upper left hand corner. Another important thing to note is that if you were ever to click on one of these repairs by mistake, you can simply click on the same item again in order to remove it from your estimate. Once I'm done with the virtual scope sheet, I can simply come up to the top and click done. This will return me back to my scope of damage screen for the building estimate with the same room highlighted that I was just working in. Over to the right, I can review the changes that have been made to this area by looking at the highlighted area totals. And I can also get a glimpse of how that affected my overall estimate totals as well. And that does it for our video on adding areas and scoping in the virtual scope sheet. So go ahead and start creating areas and adding line items so you can join us next time when we'll be walking through, printing out, and saving your claims to PDF.